Dawnstar is a tiny, tiny town north of the region known as the Pale. It's the capital of the region, but calling it so is kind of an overstatement. The place is minuscule, with literally only 11 houses, and four of those be neither stores or governmental buildings. It's sad and lonely, merely a dot in the expansive Skyrim region. Many players see this location as only the backdrop for the Varmina Daedra quest, and many others only as that one place where you kill that one person for that one quest. Just a, a place easily forgotten during the otherwise epic adventure of the Dragonborn. But there are a lot of interesting things in here, so let's dig in. Number 1 the Mythic Dawn was a group of cultists that venerated Merun Stegen, the Daedric Prince of Destruction. They were actually the main antagonists of the player character in Elder Scrolls Oblivion. In fact, they were the ones that assassinated the last emperor of the Septim bloodline, plunging the Empire into chaos, which furthermore was one of the main catalysts to the civil war in Skyrim. They are… not very good people. In fact, you really should hate them. Salius Vesuvius, however, has made a museum in their honor, right in his very own house house. In here you can find memorabilia of Elder Scrolls Oblivion, from the dresses that the Mythic Dawn used to use, to quest items that the hero from the previous game needed to collect in order to progress. The Mythic Dawn commentaries. But that's not what's interesting. What's interesting is the last remaining page of a powerful Daedric artifact known as the Mysterium Zarzis. This artifact was designed to allow a human to be able to create his own Realm of Oblivion, a very powerful ability. You might already know all of this, however, from playing Oblivion. What you might not know is that we can actually read what's in the page. You see, there is no such thing as the Daedric language. What we have instead is more of a Daedric font. Every Daedric letter can be substituted for its Latin equivalent. When you do such, this is what comes out. When I walk the earth again, the faithful among you shall receive your reward, to be set above all other mortals forever. As for the rest, the weak shall be winnowed, the timid shall be cast down, the mighty shall tremble at my feet and pray for pardon. Now, as cool as that is, it's not actually the main reason for me to talk about the Mysterium Xarzis. Rumors on the street, legends in churches, speak of a transformation most bizarre. When fire be applied to the pages of the demons, buckets shall arise. No, seriously, if you cast fire upon the page of the Mysterium Xarzis, it, it turns into a bucket. I, I, I just don't... I, I just don't know, man. There's no reason. There, there is no lore. This is just... This is just reality, man. Go ahead, try it in your game. Go turn on Skyrim and check this out. You spew fire at it and it turns into a bucket for some reason. It's just so cool how weird this is. Number 2 Dawnstar is currently a small outpost in the far fringes of the world, too small to be of importance. But that wasn't always the case. Throughout history, Dawnstar has been an important beacon for events that have changed the fate of the world, even if you might not believe it. In fact, Dawnstar used to be a big city, with kings and queens that would rule it. In fact, it used to be called the Kingdom of Dawnstar. The old rulers of Solitude used to marry the rulers of Dawnstar in political marriage. That's how important Dawnstar used to be. This comes from the fact that the entire eastern side of Skyrim is what is now known as the Old Holds, when compared to the New Holds to the west. This is one of the main reasons why they are so attached to the idea of Old Skyrim that Jarl Ulfric proposes. These Holds have been in existence since pretty much the existence of Nords in the region, and appreciate the old ways. In fact, Dawnstar is no stranger to rebellion. You see, a long time ago, the Empire used to have a Taeski as a Lord Protector something that a lot of people didn't particularly appreciate. He wasn't chosen by the people, he was merely the advisor to Remen Cyrodiil III. And when Remen died, the Taeski was chosen to maintain order until a new emperor was elected. It was none other than the Nords from Dawnstar that rebelled against this ruler by destroying his fortifications in the region. This caused a bloody war that lasted for 37 years all across the empire. Also, did you know that the region where Dawnstar resides, the Pale, wasn't always supposed to be called that either. In fact, you can see it on some of Skyrim's maps that the developers were going to call the region White Shore, but they seemingly decided against it. You can see that still on the Russian translation of the game, where the name White Shore is actually still in the game. Number 3 Baytild is a Nord miner that works in the Ironbreaker mine in Dawnstar. 
She is in fact the owner of the establishment and works really hard to compete with the only other mine in town, the Quicksilver Mine. A Dark Brotherhood contract has been put on her, a quest that will have you go to the small town in order to kill her. The question is why though? Why would somebody want to off her, especially when she essentially owns one of the only two sources of jobs in the town? When you start digging deeper, it turns out, as amusing as it is, that her main competitor, the owner of the Quicksilver Mine, is actually her ex ex-husband. The nature of their divorce is never divulged in the game, but many times over you can overhear Beytild tell her workers to work harder in order to compete with who she calls her enemy, a person that the miners call her husband. Now there are many clues scattered across Dawnstar that leaves me to believe that the murderer is the ex-husband, though they're not as much clues as they seem to be hints. First and foremost, people in town seem to believe that Leigelf and Beytild are still married. It's, it's odd because they don't seem to be acting like they're married, but people seem to think they are. Almost as if they're trying to keep it secret. Especially interesting considering that a priest of Mara, you know, the actual goddess that marries people, just so happens to be in town. A person that you would think should be able to divorce them if they would want it to. Which makes the relationship just even more odd. There is a small dialogue option that happens when you speak to some of the sailors in the Sea Squall, the ship that's anchored at the bay. The captain of the ship just recently inherited the boat from his mother, but interestingly one of the sailors claims surprise at the fact, claiming that the concept of inheritance is interesting, that you could technically just kill a person and obtain their belongings by just a rule. This character does happen to hang out oddly close to Legelf. It's even more interesting that if you do randomly kill Legelf, then Beytild will say that she sort of misses him, something that you would imagine would be common if you were to lose someone that you at least at some point cared for. But if you do end up killing Beytild, as per the Brotherhood quest, then Legelf will say no such thing. In fact, he'll be more than happy that she is now dead. The next thing is that the Quicksilver Mine is actually doing a lot better than the Ironbreaker Mine. So if Legelf wanted to kill Beytild just to avoid competition, well, that is sort of silly, isn't it? His mine is already winning. So why would he do that? The only reason I can think is that maybe everyone still believes that they are married. So when she dies, the only just thing to do would be to give him her mine as inheritance and nobody would be the wiser. Number 4 there is an unmarked location close to Dawnstar. Past the mountain where the lighthouse is, you will find a tent. Though more than that, it is actually a lover's tent. When you go in, you notice there are two bedrolls, empty wine cups, sweets, roses, boots, and of course, an amulet of Mara. The Amulet of Love. Clearly some young couple must have set camp here to look upon the cold sea of ghosts. However, the story of this tent is probably far, far darker. Arondale used to be a citizen of Dunstar before he became a necromancer lord that now resides inside of Yingwild. The quests that you complete inside and the journals that you read while on it are a little disturbing. For Arondale discovered what could have possibly been at some point the Tomb of Battle Maidens that is, the tomb of all female Nord warriors. Now, Arondale is a major necrophile, for he revives these female Draugrs to use as he sees fit. Not only that, but he has now started to abduct females to transform them into ghosts, so that he can have what he himself describes in his journals as a newly discovered sensation. Thing is, Arondale was actually always a pervert, including when he used to live in Dawnstar. Arondale claims in his journals that he used to fantasize about girls from Dawnstar, not particularly dating them, since they wouldn't pay him any attention, but simply daydream and pretend. This lover's tent is more than likely a remnant of Arondale's time in Dawnstar, imagining what life could be if it was attractive. Number 5 by the entrance of the Ironbreaker Mine, if you look between a couple of rocks, you might find something very interesting. There is a secret stash hidden in the snow. A stash that contains all manner of riches and items for the plunderer to obtain. It is a little difficult to finagle your way into having it pop up, but if you move around for a few seconds, you should be able to get it. It almost seems like somebody had hidden this stash for later. However, once you start analyzing the contents, you start to get an odd vibe from this. Children clothing. 
toys and teddy bears. It almost makes it seem like somebody's murdering people, including children, and hiding the evidence. The truth, however, is not quite as dramatic. You see, when you buy an item out of a store, the game is not just creating the item and then putting it on your inventory. You're actually taking the very item from the store. You might have noticed before when you say, go to a general store and you buy a potion, and you can actually see the potion disappear behind the vendor. It's a, a neat system where it sort of keeps a semblance of realism where you can actually see around the store what the vendor can actually sell. Sometimes though, in fact, most of the time I would say, the vendor doesn't have space in his store to showcase everything that he is selling. Because of that, the game has secret chests hidden underground where the items are found before the players can buy them. They are hidden in a way that it is impossible for the Dragonborn to find them, unless they are of course cheating. This is why when you remove clipping and go floating around Whiterun, you can see so many hidden chests below ground. The famous hidden stash of Dawnstar is actually merely one of these chests. You might wonder though, which vendor is the owner of this chest? I mean, there is no store right at the entrance of the mine. Well, my good friend, the chest is actually from Akara, the Khajiit caravan vendor who makes his way into Dawnstar every once in a while. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I apologize if you guys already knew some of these or if they didn't seem as crazy as some of the other ones that we have done. Um, see, Dawnstar is just so tiny, man, it's hard. Uh, but I did my best. If you want to help out the channel like Alexander Bryson and Dylan Baker did, then head on over to patreon.com slash and support us. Every dollar helps and it's greatly appreciated. Have a good week, you guys.